What's up everybody, Super WRX fan here, and uh, today I want to give you a full in-depth tour of my 2013 Subaru BRZ Limited. And this is going to be a full in-depth tour of the BRZ. I'm going to start it up, uh, get an exhaust clip, go over the uh, specs of the car, and uh, also the interior and exterior. So let's start it up and let her run. And this car is the limited model, so it has keyless access. So I have the key, just put it in my pocket, and go up to it, it's currently locked. You just grab the door handle, and it, lock, and it unlocks. And then, to lock it, you just hit this little thing right here, and it locks. And it's uh, all locked up. Wait five seconds, uh, and then you can go back, and it opens again. Uh, so that's a pretty cool feature, uh, only on the limited model. This car is finished in World Rally Blue Pearl. Um, it's a, a color that you've seen a lot on the WRX, and uh, it's the only exclusive color to the Subaru BRZ. Uh, all the other colors are shared with the Scion FRS and the Toyota GT86. So this is the only color exclusive to the Subaru. And uh, as you can see, this one also has uh, the leather seats with Alcantara um, inserts, you know, faux suede. Um, and it also has, you know, the contrast stitching along the doors, the seats, and the uh, shift knob and e-brake handle. So let's, uh, let's start it up. This car also has push button start, so uh, right down here, see I just hit that, put your foot on the brake. So it's kind of on the headlights. This car does have automatic headlights, as well as the uh, hazard lights. And let's go take a look outside. All right, so starting with the headlights, as you can see, it has uh, Xenon headlights, uh, which are manual adjustment inside the cabin. You can uh, adjust uh, the headlights up and down. Uh, it has this LED eyebrow that uh, illuminates, those are the parking lights. So whenever the parking lights are on on the inside, these will light up only. Uh, you, know, you have the headlight there, turn signals right here. Uh, these are the daytime running lights down here. There's three LEDs, uh, they light up whenever the E brakes down whenever you're driving around and then these are the fog lights of course it has this aggressive little lip that comes out um, it's very subtle but I think it looks really good um, and I really like it has this uh, kind of faux carbon fiber it's um, kind of bumpy black plastic right here uh, and it reminds me of the GTR's front nose with its black piece and uh, I thought that was a really cool feature that only the BRZ had, which was another reason why I like the BRZ. Although someone, some people might consider that to be a mustache. Uh, kind of, to some people it gives it a funny look, but I uh, love the way it looks. This car has uh, 17 inch rims, uh, finished with the glossy, shiny, metallic black. Uh, as you can see in the sunlight here, there's got those metal flakes in it, it looks really cool. And it also has the silver pieces down here. Um, it's a really nice looking wheel, I actually like it a lot. Uh, has nice big brakes as you can see. Uh, these brakes uh, stop the car really well. It's uh, quite impressive just how well it stops. The car is running on uh, 215 45 17 tires. Uh, they're Michelin Primacy HP. 
and these are actually the tires that are on the sport performance version of the Prius in Japan. Uh, so some people have uh, taken to calling them Prius tires. They're not quite the tires you get on the Prius here in the U.S., but um, they aren't the best tires, but they are pretty good, and I think they suit this car really well. The engineers specifically picked a tire that was skinny and um, not as aggressive, mainly just because they wanted the car to be easier to drift. Uh, and I think it really gives it a nice tossable feel while still giving you confidence. Um, and the 215s are also the same in the back. A lot of rear wheel drive cars have a staggered, you know, setup, so the rear tires are normally fatter, but on this they're the same. It's the 215, 4517s. Um, so other features here, we have this fake vent. I really wish this were a real brake vent, but it's fake. Um, it's just plastic. and. I think it gives it a really cool touch that it's kind of got this arrow thing going on here. Uh, I really like that. I thought that was a really cool uh, feature. I think the car is just beautiful. It has, you know, bulging fenders that come up over the hood. And the hood has these little creases in it as well. I think it looks really nice, leading right up to the Subaru badge here. Um, the car has, you know, dual color mirrors, so this is black plastic down here and then the blue up there looks really good and uh, another feature that some people might not have noticed about the BRZ is the roof it has these cutouts like a double bubble feature similar to the Viper except the Vipers are curved and bubbly these are just straight cuts um, that go down the middle of the car and I think they look really cool and it's kind of extending you know that line that you saw in the hood that led up to the super emblem falls all the way back here through to the roof and it's really cool. You have your uh, radio antenna here. It also gets satellite radio, so that's in there as well. And then out back, you have LED taillights, um, the reflectors over here. Turn signal bulb is down here, and uh, you have you know the Subaru badge. You have this spoiler, which uh, some people don't like. They think that the car is better with the natural curves. Um, I actually really like this spoiler. It's small and much more subtle than I was even expecting. As you can see, there's really no gap here. It's not like it's raised up off of the ground. It's a, uh, you know, just kind of almost like a duck lid spoiler. It just has these extra flares on the sides. Um, but I really like the way that looks. The nice BRZ badge there. Um, and then the reverse lights are down here. These two are the reverse lights. This is a reflector in the U.S., but it's wired up. It's normally the Euro uh, fog light, you know, in the back. It's, the wiring harness is in there and everything, so it's really easy to hook up if you want to. I'm thinking about doing that, but uh, for right now, that's just a reflector. Uh, and then you have, you know, the dual exhaust. Over here in the U.S., we get the smaller exhaust tips as well because of our dumb laws. Apparently, you can't have exhaust tips that come out too far, and the JDM and uh, Euro exhaust tips came out too far that people could get burned or whatever if they rubbed up against the side of the car. So these ones are farther recessed back and have, uh, you know, smaller tips. And I'm not a huge fan of those. Like I said in my previous videos, those are going to have to go as soon as I find an exhaust that I really like. And uh, so that's it. It has this uh, also, it's made it this black plastic diffuser. It's made out of the same material as the front uh, mustache piece. And uh, this isn't too sturdy, it's kind of flimsy, um, but it's not bad. I think it adds to the looks of the car. I don't know how much it actually does, you know to help the handling or anything like that. But it's a, it's a cool touch. I think it, it's kind of a nice uh, finishing piece to the car. And then you have uh, your gas cap here. Um, otherwise, that's about it for the exterior. I really like the taillights, how they bulge out. It's kind of, might be hard to see on camera, but they you know come out of the car here. So they're, I think they really look nice, how they bulge out like that. Um, and you can see the curves of this back end too, how it bulges out, you know, this rear fender. It almost looks like wide body with how wide it is. It's really cool looking. This car just has so many curves and stuff. Even if the car handled terribly, I would probably still would have considered buying it just as an artistic piece because I think this car is absolutely beautiful. I mean, I might be biased since I own it, but I, uh, I think it is beautiful. All right, so let's go over some of the interior features now. First, uh, you know, we have the doors here. So um, it has, you know, padding here. This is like a very tight 
vinyl. I'm not sure that's actual real leather, um, but it feels really nice. Um, it's perforated, uh, and that's a really nice feature. And then it has the leather pads here for um, the door handle. And this is really nice because this door sill, it's, uh, it's all padded up here. This is padded, it's all very soft and squishy. Um, it's really soft. It's really nice, you know, on the highway cruises I was doing, to kind of rest your elbow there, and it's very comfortable. Um, so it helps with, you know, your long distance cruising comfort. Uh, it has auto up and down windows, so, you know, you just hit them once, and they go down, and then you hit them again, and they go up. Um, that's a nice feature. My Legacy only had auto down, so having the auto up is nice because you don't have to hold it whenever you're trying to hurry up and get out of the car and stuff. Uh, you know, you have your lock button, you have the window lockout feature, so, you know, if the passenger is a four-year-old or something and they keep playing with the uh, window, you can lock that and they won't be able to uh, mess with the window. You have your mirror adjustment here, uh, you know, left and right, it's power mirrors. And, of course, you know, here's the door handle uh, with the lock. Um, you know, and that's automatic, of course, if you hit the button. Um, you have this door handle, which also has some kind of rubbery leather kind of feeling to it. It, it has a really good feel. It's solid. Um, you know, there's no gaps or anything. This is pretty, pretty good uh, workmanship. And then there's also a bottle holder down here, which is a nice feature. You have two cup holders in the center, but there's, it's nice to have these bottle holders in each of the doors. Um, there's really no cubbies in this car. There's no place to keep anything. Um, of any real size. So this is a nice little place if you want to you know, store your wallet or this video camera for example fits nicely in here. You can put stuff like that in there. Um, it has this aluminum kick plate here with rubber plastic little inserts. Um, this gives it a cool little touch. This is again more of that fake um, rubbery leather kind of stuff right here and um, that feels pretty nice. Uh, it's kind of random though because then it switches to plastic right here. Um, so it's kind of a bit random, but I mean, it feels nice. I'm not complaining. Um, you have your gas door down here. Uh, you just pull that off. The seat is manual adjustment. Um, even though this is a limited model, they insisted that the seats be all manual, mainly because, you know, the lightweight, this car, you know, the same reason why there isn't a sunroof offered. This car comes only with a hard top, you know, no glass roof at all or sunroof or anything like that. But again, because they wanted to keep the center of gravity low and they wanted to keep the weight down. So it has manual seats. Um, you have this adjustment for your back. Uh, you just pull up on that and the seat goes back and forth. And then uh, this, you pump up or down, you know, to raise the height of the seat up or down. Um, you have your bar here to pull the seat forward and backwards. Uh, it has the nice mats here. This came free with the car. Um, has the aluminum pedals as well. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, the pre-production cars had a slightly longer gas pedal, so it was easier for heel and towing. This is still pretty nice. I'm not, I'm not nearly an expert at heel and towing, um, but it's, it feels pretty nice to me whenever I tried it a few times. Um, and it's, it's just a really nice thing. Uh, here's the dead pedal here, uh, which is a nice, nicely positioned, you know, for highway cruising and stuff. Um, so then you have your uh, trunk release here. And this is the um, headlight leveling that I was telling you about. So you have it on zero, or you put it up, you know, to five. Five would be really high up. So if you have, you know, the back seat loaded up with tons and tons of heavy stuff, you know, and the trunk's loaded up, or you have, you know, two really large people back there somehow. I don't know how you would fit them. I don't know how you fit anyone back there, but um, it, it, you know, you can adjust it for, you know, the different heights. Um, which is a cool feature. And then this is for the interior lights, so you can have that brighter or dimmer depending on your preference. I'm gonna turn off the hazard lights so you don't get annoyed by the clicking. And let's uh, shut it up. Uh, so you have your speaker down there. Um, it's nice and quiet in here as you can tell. Uh, so there's, you know, your vents here. There's another vent up here, you know, for defrosting of the windows. Uh, you have two speakers up here. Um, they do a really nice job. Uh, the sound system in this car is slightly underpowered, but uh, it does a really good job for what it has to work with. Um, it's getting really hot, so I'm going to turn on the air conditioning in here. Uh, it's automatic climate control while I'm here. Um, you know, you can adjust it for different temperatures, and you know, it'll automatically, you know, kick on. It says full auto, so it'll adjust the fan speed on its own. Um, now you see it going up. It realizes it's way hotter than 70 degrees in here. I'm going to turn that down though so you can hear me better. Um, 
So and then you have your clock here, you know, standard Toyota clock. Um, the passenger airbag on and off, you know, the hazard switch I showed you earlier. And it has these little toggle switches down here, which remind me of the GTRs, you know, like traction control off and stuff. Very similar to that. So this is off, you know, to turn off the auto automatic climate control completely. Um, you have dual, so if you don't want to control, you know, if you don't want to have both sides going, you can have it so only, you know, the driver's side is going. You can, you know, this is for recycling or, you know, clothes, depending on what kind of airflow, if it's smelly outside or whatever, you can close that up like it is right now. Um, manual air conditioning switch, and that's your rear defroster there. The engine start stop button you saw earlier. Um, and then it also has this little thing here, so you have a USB ports. You can plug a USB stick into there, you can plug your uh, iPod cable, iPhone, you know, plug it into there, it'll charge it as well as connect it, you know, to the stereo. And then you have the, um, you know, standard auxiliary port as well. It has this small little cubby right here that, um, get a close up on. It's pretty decently sized. I mean, I can fit my iPhone in it just barely. And it, um, you know, it sticks out. But I mean, it'll stay in there pretty well, so I don't have to worry about it falling out or anything. If you don't have any better place to put your phone, I mean, in this car, with everything being Bluetooth and stuff, there's really uh, no reason why, you know, you can't just leave the phone in your pocket um, unless you really have to text while driving, which I don't recommend, but I do sometimes as well. Um, so then, you know, you have your shifter here. It's a six-speed manual. Um, really nice leather shift knob. It has a nice weight to it. Um, I'll shift through some of the gears here. So there's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then for reverse, there's this little uh, lever right here you pull up on and then go over like that, and that's reverse. And then, you know, it'll automatically pop out whenever you're done. You go back in neutral. Um, so then also you have your front defroster here. You have, you know, the different positions for the fans. Um, you know, do you want it on your feet in the vents or whatever? Um, so that's that. Um, so here's the fun buttons. Traction control off is right here. It's real simple. You just hit that and it comes up on the dash there. Traction control off. Uh, and then there's a VSV, VSC Sport button. And uh, the VSC Sport, it also turns off traction control for you, but it also allows the car to get sideways. So um, it's actually a progressive system. So, you know, you can totally turn it off completely by pressing and holding this. You can turn off everything, and then that'll make you, you know, susceptible to whatever. Um, you just hold that down for three seconds, um, and then just press it again to turn it off. But for the VSC Sport, the Sport mode is actually really nice because it lets you get sideways in the car, but not so much that, you know, you can do donuts. So it'll, you know, let you get really sideways. You can have a lot of fun, you know, as long as you know what you're doing and you have enough space, you know, to not be a Tokyo drifter drifting on back roads and stuff. But that's a really cool uh, function, you know, just so that the car doesn't, you know, if you get it, I actually haven't even engaged the traction control yet, you know, it has, I haven't driven it aggressively enough to even get it upset, I mean, it'll, you know, get a little bit squirrely even with everything on, um, you know, but it, this, the sport mode basically saves you so that, you know, if you get to the point of no return, it prevents you from, you know, getting into a slide that's not savable. Um, so that's a really nice feature. I think they did a really good job with the sport mode um, from the tutorials I've seen online and stuff. Anyway, you also have your heated seats here, so uh, you put those on like that. Um, there's the low and high, so depending on, you know, just how uh, badly you want heated seats, you can adjust it with the two different modes there. Um, you have your cup holders and this little pocket thing right here. I'm putting quarters in it because I've been driving on toll roads recently. Um, but this is technically designed to, you know, put your key in if you don't want to keep the key in your pocket. You know, it's pretty thin, so again, you know, if I wanted to store my phone in here, I could. Um, you know, I don't have any case or anything on mine, so I'm kind of careful about just, you know, leaving it in there. But if you have a case on your phone, it'll fit in there fine, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, that's a nice place for it. Um, it has, you know, the two cup holders, and it has a power outlet here, and this cup holder comes out completely, and there, you can use the whole thing if you want, you can put it back here, and it's got these notches, um, to hold it into place. So you can fit, um, a decent amount of stuff in there, it's a nice little setup, I like it. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, as the seat actually has really nice bolsters to it, um, 
they're I'm a pretty small guy and these seats hold me really well I'm always like frustrated because they make seats especially in America they make all the seats for huge oversized Americans you know just because it's a one-size-fits-all kind of thing and with this car um, they left the Japanese seats in. and normally you know Japanese um, designer seats to be a little bit thinner because in general you know their population is thinner and uh, smaller people so this seat fits me almost like a glove. I mean, it's great. And then the Alcantara inserts are really grippy too, so it holds you in really well. Um, the only complaint about the Alcantara is it doesn't breathe at all, so it gets a little bit hot, you know, if you're driving around with just the windows down and, you know, it's hot in the car already. The seats aren't going to be ventilated. There's really, you know, they're not perf perforated or anything like that. So they do get kind of hot and, you know, your back can get kind of sweaty um, with that. So I'll turn off the headlights here. Um, you have your fog light switch here, and then um, you know your turn signal, um, and that's about that. It for that, you know, there's the high beams. You pull it back, and it'll put the high beams on for you. Um, you have your windshield wipers over here, standard thing with that. Um, so then there's these little buttons right here where um, you can do kilometers or miles per hour. So you know, right now it's on miles per hour. I go and switch that over to um, kilometers. It'll switch, you know, between kilometers and miles per hour. I have the odometer and trip button, so that scrolls through different things. Um, you know, you have your trip A, trip B, and then you know it goes back to the odometer. You have your display uh, button, which um, toggles between different things. So that's my average miles per gallon, 31.1. Um, that's for the red line, so it has a red line little light you can see right there it's not illuminated right now but um, I have it set for 3700 rpms because I'm keeping the car below 4000 rpms for the break-in period uh, so that um, will light up at 3700 and you can actually turn it on so it beeps as well um, I don't have the beep on because I, you know it's such a low rpm speed I don't want to get annoyed with the beeping too quickly but you know if once the car's working in I'll probably put it at like 7000 rpm for the red line and then I'll have the beep going on you know because at 7000 it's probably gonna get kind of noisy in here so it'd be nice to have the beep I think it's just a cool feature too to have the car like beeping at you whenever it's uh, uh, you know near critical engine level kind of thing I think it's just kind of cool give a speedometer over here um, I never look at it because you know the digital ones just so much clearer and uh, cooler and stuff anyway uh, back to the display button so if you hit that again um, it gives you you know your outside temperature your instant miles per gallon and that's basically useless I mean you know, if you take your foot off the gas and you're going 30 miles an hour it'll say you're getting 121 miles per gallon and you know if you, s you hit the gas at all it says you have nine miles per gallon you know, that you're doing it's kind of silly I don't know why they even include that um, so that's all of those things then you just hit the odometer button uh, to go back to you know your odometer 726 miles on it right now you have you know you're obviously your gas uh, gauge there your engine temperature gauge um, the horn, someone asked me about the horn, so I'll blow the horn for you. It's, you know, a typical Japanese horn. It's actually a little bit louder than, uh, the Legacy. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I like the horn sound. I mean, not like, you know, that's a selling feature of a car, but it's, it's a nice, uh, sound. And also, um, while I'm on the steering wheel here, it says a really nice uh, perforated leather here on the sides. It has these nice little grips um, for your thumbs. And then up top here, it's you know this uh, textured leather. The whole thing is leather wrapped though, and it's really nice. It's a pretty small wheel. Um, I have really small hands, and so they fit around here just barely. I mean, it's pretty thick. It's not quite as thick as some of the like BMW M5 wheel or something like that. Um, you know, it's not quite that thick, but it's. It's definitely thicker than my Legacy, and it feels really good. And then as you get down to the bottom, though, it tapers off and gets a little bit thinner. It's kind of a progressive uh, wheel. It's really nice. This is plastic here. Looks like metal. Um, it feels pretty decent, you know. I mean, it definitely feels like plastic, which is nice, though, because that way it doesn't get too hot um, in the summertime here and stuff. Um, so it's really nice, you know. I mean, the stitching is really cool, too, with all the red, red stitching. You have your cruise control here. You know, it's your basic up down set um, real simple basic system um, so yeah that's that as far as all those features and you have the vents there it's auto dimming uh, mirror that's the only option I got on the car it comes with the old-fashioned you know, standard thing and I can't stand that so this has the compass built into it so you can see you know it tells you what position you're facing and um, it's a nice mirror the one thing that I really think they went cheap on with this car is these uh, 
mirrors, the the you know shades in the mirror. Um, you know, it is illuminated and you know it has a decent sized mirror, but this just feels incredibly cheap. It's really thin. I can see this falling apart in five years. Um, actually, you can see here it's already kind of flimsy right there where the thumb tab is, um, and it you know like pounds up real hard. It's real just. It doesn't really match the rest of the headliner, as you can kind of see as it focuses here. It's uh, not the best, um, but I mean, you hardly ever look at that. So if there's any place to cut corners, I'd say that's the best one. Also up here, um, you have your lights, um, you know, that's on, off, and then you have, you know, for whenever the door is open. This is your microphone for the voice command, um, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, and then you can also see how that, you know, double bubble thing in the roof here um, it actually comes through to the headliner and you can see it you know going all the way back and then as far as airbags um, you know it has the one here it has the one in here um, it also has side airbags so you have airbags right here on the uh, pillars you know the head curtain airbags and it also has airbags in the uh, side bolsters of the seats so this car has six airbags so I'm expecting it to get really high safety ratings um, in typical Subaru fashion um, and it's just it's very well put together and that also gives you extra peace of mind having all those airbags uh, so I like that feature a lot okay now for the navigation system uh, you know, all your audio controls and the navigation are in this unit right here. Um, so you have these little buttons here for audio, voice command, and map. Um, and they also have, you know, your eject button. You can, it's a single disc CD changer. It also has an SD card slot here. This actually holds the map data um, normally. So it's, you know, just the North American uh, map. And then just pop it back in. You can put. Uh, different SD cards in here. You can actually put images on this card and you can have a new startup image. This has the Subaru that comes up. You can adjust this so that it's, you know, whatever you want to have. Um, so every time you start the car up, it, you know, loads for a second, which is kind of annoying sometimes, but then you, you know, hit I agree and then it's ready to go. Um, it's just connected to my telephone via Bluetooth. So you have, you know, a nice little colorful map going on there. Um, for the standard stuff. This is a split screen view. You can have a full screen um, and it'll take away the audio there and show you the whole map. Um, and then, you know, there's so the navigation is menu is find, you know, my route, my route, and then more, you know, and that's for all your settings. Um, I wish I could get rid of this glare. Sorry about that. Um, so that's that. Um, go back. Okay, so find. There's different, you know, things you can do. So you have, you know, different addresses that I've been to over the past few days. You can find places, um, gas stations, you know, whatever, and it'll pull up nearest gas stations. Um, you can put in an address. So it has XM um, built in. It's HD radio too, which is um, nice. You know, if you listen to the radio a lot. Uh, voice command. Voice command, please. Help. Help. Phone. Hands free. Hands free command, please. Dial. Dial. Please say dial number, otherwise, say call or delete. Delete. Two, eight. <laughs> Cancel. Cancel. Voice recognition mode has been canceled. So, I mean, as you can see, it does a really good job, you know, um, just doing the basic stuff. It's, you know, nice because the car will lock you out, you know, you can't play around with too many of the features on here. It'll do some stuff, but you can't do, you, you can't add, enter a whole address or anything like that whenever you're driving, you know, as a safety feature, because I think people are going to be running off the roads because they're staring at their navigation systems. So anyway, that's that for the voice command. It'll also do audio stuff. It doesn't get too, you know, I can't like say a song name. It doesn't understand stuff like that, but I can, you know, switch sources so I can say, you know, radio FM. Um, satellite, you know, things like that, and it'll switch to it on its own, um, which is kind of cool. So there's audio, there's different audio sources right now, it's off. Um, there's, you know, AM, FM, satellite, and then, you know, I haven't actually played with this too much, but um, right now, you know, it'll display the name, um, you know, the name of the artist, the song, and whenever you're listening to a CD or like 
you know, on my iPod, it'll say, you know, album name and things like that as well. Um, you can, you know, switch forward and back, or you can go forward and back on your presets. There's sound and preset um, and settings. Sound, um, it actually gives you a decent amount of customization, so you can adjust your EQ. So there's all the different, um, you know, frequencies and things like that. I don't even understand half of that. You can adjust that, though, if you're the uh, audio file in you want to you know play with that stuff you can there's sound position so um, you can adjust you know where you want the sound so if you want it up high you can uh, have fader so you can actually you know have different positions wherever you want you know and then if you want you just hit center I mean that's basic you know that's normally what I think everyone will choose um, so that's that it's kind of cool it has SVC I'm not sure what that is um, the ASL though it's for adjusting the volume whenever it senses um, different uh, sounds in the car scene. Like when you're on the highway, it'll turn it up because it recognizes that it's louder in the cabin. That's kind of weird. I haven't gotten used to that. I think it's just I'm just uncomfortable with having my volume be constantly adjusted for me. I'm constantly playing with it and you know putting it back to where it was before. Um, so that's something that I'm uh, still getting used to. I might turn it off if it continues to annoy me. I'm not sure. But it's a cool feature nonetheless. Um, so and then you have your phone and this is how you you know you can dial you know whatever you want to do um, has your contacts in here so you can have everyone you know and just hit there's speed dial that you can do um, you know like your previous um, outgoing calls that you've made um, incoming calls things like that um, it's all um, pretty you know standard stuff but it's new you know for me this is my first car with Bluetooth so I really like this stuff and it's really cool um, it also gives you you know how much battery life you have on your phone um, you know the Bluetooth connection strength and then your signal strength I get pretty crappy reception out here thank you AT&T and then um, go down and there's other things here so uh, it's kind of hard to see but that's auxiliary so you know if you have um, something plugged in here that'll work also um, you know, other things are disc and USB, and then iPod will be one of the options that comes up if you plug your iPod in. Uh, there's info here, and then there's like Bluetooth, which is uh, Bluetooth audio. You guys wanted to hear how it sounds, so this is a song you might like. This is Donza Cadudro, and so it has pretty decent bass in here. There's, um, you know, the two speakers here, you have your speaker here, and there's also speakers in the back. Sounds pretty nice, um, and then you know, with this, it doesn't give you any album art, which is kind of a downside. I wish it did, um, but you know, you can do your basic, you know, play, pause. Um, you, know, you can go forward and backwards. So that's basically it for the head unit. All right, so let's uh, get out of the car here. And uh, someone asked me to um, sit in the back seat. Uh, you know, to put someone back there, and I have no one with me right now, but. I'll uh, go back there myself. So this, you know, you open it up, and um, right now, I mean, I have it set for my seating position. I'm five foot nine, so um, this is <laughs> this is it. Okay, so my feet are crammed under that seat, and my feet are sideways right now, so my legs are sitting like this. Um, and you know, if the seat back isn't too far back, hold on, let me just adjust this. Okay, so the seat back. He's in a comfortable position for the driver. Whoa, he's got to focus. Okay, so uh, if the seat back, you know, is in a normal position for a driver, I can fit back here. I mean, my legs are sideways. Um, there's the little speaker that I was talking about. And, I mean, this is not terrible. I mean, you know, there's an armrest here. Um, have your little window. Um, you know, it's not awful. It's just, you know, and the, it's nice because the seats do go really far back here. Um, so your butt's really far back, uh, so there's not, you don't need a ton of leg room, but like I said, I mean, I can't be comfortable like this for more than 30 minutes, and even my sister, who's a few inches shorter than I am, said she wouldn't be comfortable back here for too long either. So, um, you know, it's not bad in a pinch. If you have to, you know, a few of your buddies need to ride home and it's close, you know, something like that's fine. Okay, this passenger seat is back all the way. It's reclined all the way back. Um, someone tall was sitting back here, was sitting in the passenger seat. So there is essentially nothing. I mean, I can fit my fingers in between here. That's it. Like, I mean, it's really... So if you have a taller passenger, 
this is essentially a two-seater. I mean, there's no hope. If the two people sitting up front are tall, you literally cannot fit anyone back here unless you put your feet up on, you know, the seat next to you. Um, so, you know, if you have a shorter driver, a shorter passenger, you know, that doesn't mind moving their seat up a little bit, this isn't, you know, terrible. Like I said, I can fit back here for a little bit. There's another shot of the back seat. All right, I'm gonna pop the trunk and I'm also gonna pop the hood. It's got here. Okay, so there's a little button right there you press to uh, open the trunk. Okay, so the trunk isn't, you know, the biggest. I fit a suitcase in here, no problem. Um, anything more than this, the height of a suitcase, that's about the height of this. So. There's not too much room in here. Um, it's not bad, and the seats do fold down. You can uh, pull this little strap here, and um, re that'll release the little locks, and the seat will go flat, totally flat. And so you can adjust this, you know, and put, you know, tires and rims and stuff like that in here, and it'll fit pretty decently. Um, other than that, you know, I mean, it's, as I said, there's not a whole lot, but again, this is a small little sports car. I wasn't expecting it to have, you know, a station wagon style utility. Um, so, you know, you have, in case you lock someone in the trunk, <laughs> they can get out there. Um, and, uh, that sound is just this license plate frame. That's not, it doesn't sound that crappy when you close it. Okay. okay. So here's, you know, the engine. Um, it's, as many of you know, it's a two liter, uh, direct injected four cylinder. It's non-turbo. Um, it's, you know, Pretty quiet motor, it ticks a little bit, which freaks some people out, but all the flat four boxer motors tick like that. Um, so you have, you know, your intake box here. Um, and this car actually has an intake sound tube, so it, it pipes in some of the intake sounds into the cabin. And that's this tube right here that goes back all the way down and goes into your vents. As you can see, uh, Subaru engineered the entire car. Toyota just did the exterior and interior. Um, and Toyota also contributed the direct injection system. So that's a Toyota unit, but everything else is Subaru. So this engine, you know, is 200 horsepower. It makes that, uh, that max at 7,000 RPMs. Uh, it has 151 foot-pounds of torque, and it makes that at 6,300 RPMs. So yeah, that's about it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, in-depth tour of the car and uh, you know many more videos of the car to come so stay tuned subscribe like the Facebook page all that good stuff uh, to stay up to date on everything with this car and yeah I'll see you guys later